everything that we do pivots around that combination of creativity and technology, basically. And what we now say we do is create human-centric experiences. Uh, we're technology agnostic, so we don't kind of want to use any particular technology um, for the sake of doing it. Um, but we can use all types of technologies. But at the, at the end of the day, most importantly, it's about creating an experience and telling a story, and the technology comes second. It's always um, to make sure that we deliver the best type of experience. So there, is a, there's a, there can be a lack of empathy between a healthcare professional and a, and a patient, um, uh, a lack of understanding uh, of what's actually happening from the point of view of the disease itself uh, and how the medication works, and that idea of how do we visualise, first of all, what's happening maybe at a cellular level to show the patient what, what's going on. And there's nothing necessarily new about that piece. That's been going on for a while. But when we create a patient-centric virtual reality experience, it normally has several different aspects to it. The first aspect is uh, showing what life is like from that patient's point of view. And what's important about that is that it helps a healthcare professional understand the patient's point of view. It allows the patient to feel heard and allows the patient to share what it's like for them at some level with their family and friends. And the reason that's important is because quite often, um, especially when the disease isn't visible, uh, patients can start feeling isolation. They stop talking about it, uh, about what their challenges are. And that uh, is part of the mental health challenge around, uh, what the disease, uh, around the disease itself. And so we take, uh, with all of that, we try and take digital therapy techniques. Um, so things like, um, uh, well, from cognitive behavioral, we might, we might use exposure therapy or we might use um, stress inoculation training. Uh, and we try and take all these things into the experience that we create uh, to help reduce stress levels for the patient, uh, empower them to reduce their own stress levels. And in doing so, uh, in certain cases, depending on what the element is in the medication is, help to increase um, their chances of actually taking the med medication correctly. One of the ways virtual reality works, uh, so for example, if you look at a PowerPoint presentation, um, two parts of your brain fire up. Um, uh, because you just retain that piece of information. If you're given an immersive, narrative-driven or character-driven story, then five parts of your brain fire up. And ultimately, what we say is when neurons fire together, they wire together, so they, they create memories, essentially. And so you're, it's much easier for somebody to recall a memory than it is to recall what you might call two-dimensional information. And so it, we're able to start literally reprogramming the brain uh, so as it's much easier for patients to remember to take their medication. It is also at the same time, it is a tool for doctors. It's like a bridge for doctors to talk to patients as well. So it's something that these experiences, for example, can be, we can put them simply on a, a mobile phone and use Google Cardboard. So you don't have to have an expensive headset to do this. It can be on YouTube, a YouTube 360 can be on a private link, which you can send that to the patient and they can just look at it on their phone or they can put a Google Cardboard, which is just, you put your phone into a piece of cardboard and it's like a headset. Um, and they can do it that way as well. And it can allow the healthcare professional to use this as a bridge to communicate to the patient uh, and to allow them to set up a series of questions that the, might, the patient might have after the experience. And that, again, that aids that communication. So I think that if, when it comes to augmented reality, um, we see, uh, for example, if you're in an operating theater, that there are so many different things that a surgeon has to look at. There are other screens, heart monitors, and so on and so forth. But if you have a pair of, and you already have your glasses, if, but if you're able to put augmented reality into the glasses, then the information can be much easier to access. So for example, if you're doing an operation, instead of having to look up and look over your glass and look at a screen over here, you simply tilt your head up and you can see all the information that you require. You can use voice control to access more of that information uh, and go back down. So it keeps you focused. Uh, and, and gives you the power of voice technology uh, and AOR to be able to, to basically uh, support the surgeon and, the, and, the, and his or her team in what they're doing. There's no doubt that um, this combination of uh, artificial intelligence, XOR technology, um, and voice uh, control and all that sort of thing, I think all of those, getting that combination right for various different instances within the industry, I think there's no doubt that's going to transform the industry. It's going to make things, uh, it's going to improve things significantly.